Welcome to The Exchange. I'm Mark Sanchez, along with Nick Mangold, former teammates for the New York Jets. Fired up about our first episode in our new podcast. Nicky, welcome in all Jets fans. Yeah, man, I'm excited about this. We have, uh, obviously, the exchange is one of the most important things between a quarterback and a center. Um, and so I think this is going to be the most important podcast of all time. Well said. I like where your head's at. Uh, I think it's important to start and make sense to start with the first snap. How do you feel about that? I like that idea. You always <laughs> got to start the game with the first snap. There's no choice. Uh, so you're, we're going to talk about some some origin stories. Um, maybe just how we met. Not like full origin, back to embryo and all that. Let's just go to where we crossed paths and took our first exchange, uh, quarterback center exchange. I'm trying to remember, not that it was like, like you're not some memorable guy, but I, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad. You know, you're supposed to always remember your first, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> your first, you were my first NFL center. <laughs> yeah, you weren't my first quarterback, so I can forget you easily. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was just another number uh, to you. <laughs> just another six. Um, <laughs> what was our first? I don't know our exact first. I remember when you got drafted. Um, and then I believe, I think I was in a Aru- Anguilla, maybe. I don't know. I was somewhere tropical. Ooh. And I saw you got drafted. Um, and then I saw pictures from the first mini camp. I was like, all right. Yeah, see, you know. that's right. I, I was working with Rob before, uh, you, got, yeah. before you were there because I was a rookie. So that's weird. So fans need to know that. So when you draft your franchise quarterback, He doesn't even meet the players he's going to play with that first weekend. I'm in there working with guys that might not even make the team. Um, Yeah, it was a good spot for you. Really, you know, let you kind of grind your way back up. Um, So coming in, I mean, it had to be OTAs, right? Would be the first time. Yeah, and this was this was the old CBA, so OTAs were right away. This was yeah. Right after the draft, you guys had already been in OTAs and doing practice and stuff. Yeah, so you just kind of slid in there, you know? And so we try to bring you in, bring you into the the mix. Um, So, yeah, I I think, obviously, you put off a a, a strong presence there and got got the ball rolling. Um, So, yeah, so I think that first year, um, which is unfortunate because, you know, I I tend to forget a lot of stuff. just because the kids kick it out of me. Um, like, I don't, I don't really, like, I have to get reminded of different experiences that we went through other than um, running the ball a lot. Um, you know, we had Thomas Jones. That was huge. Oh, yeah. And, um, and your first game, first game, hold on, um, the Texans. At Houston, yeah. Yeah. I think you had three touchdowns that game? Yes, and I threw an interception that gave him a uh, field goal, and Rex was pissed because he wanted to shut out <laughs> in his first yeah. outing. <laughs> you know, it was good to knock Rex down a couple of notches too, just like yeah. I think. I think it's interesting because you're riding high. It's college. You're this top draft pick. Boom! Right back at the bottom of the barrel, like in this rookie mini camp, and then you got to kind of work your way back up and assimilate with the guys, which was. For some people, and a lot of this was probably because of the nature of our relationship, we were going to have to work together a lot. But Nick was Nick was easy. Nick was um, I, I don't I don't want to say that in the wrong way. I mean he he was easy to get along with. He was <laughs> he made me wait. <laughs> he, um, he was um, so welcoming because he knew the nature of our relationship and what it could potentially be and how important the quarterback center relationship is. Where other players. Maybe Alan Fanica was not as receptive and not in a bad way, but he talk about make you earn it. I mean, my man barely talked to me. I don't think till playoffs. <laughs> so if we didn't make the playoffs, like we all thought we weren't, or at least Rex thought we weren't. And then the next morning we woke up and realized we could still make the playoffs. I don't know if he would have ever said a word to me <laughs> other than what's so. the count. <laughs> what's the snap count? <laughs> But it was never like, hey, how you doing? Like, watched you in college. Like, nobody cares. It's just like, hey, dude, you're new. What do you got? And um, 
I just think that's that funny. Point, I think that's so interesting. At that point, Al was what eleven years in. Oh, I mean, he had every right to yeah. be that way. I get it. But I was, was just fantastic. like, dang. I just remember asking you, asking Brandon Moore, asking Woody, asking to break a shot. Like, dude, just what's the deal with Al? Like, does he not like me or what's the deal? <laughs> They're like, who, no, man, good luck. You just need to earn earn his trust, you know. Who would you say talk the least to you? Uh, a fan him, or B more? Him and B more. But here was my yeah. favorite thing is on on the bus you guys would have copies of the daily news and new york post and this is like going to an away game so we take the bus to the airport as a team and i'd go sit in the back near you guys and woody and you would be looking at um the newspaper and something would come up in page six inevitably and you know young sanchez was out on the town with you know insert somebody's name here <laughs> and i remember you guys <laughs> looking at stuff and showing it to each other and then it was almost like alan would like look at you and be like hey why don't you ask him where they went to eat or whatever you know like he, we had to play this game of telephone and you would be like hey what uh what happened on the date how'd it go what happened after dinner da, da, da. and i'm like al i'm right here brandon moore i'm right here you could just ask me but they just went through you to get to me <laughs> yeah. it was so well, weird I think it was a novelty for us sitting there, um, especially myself being in New York for three years at that point. And, you know, Chad kept the low profile. Um, Farvey was Farvey, but he kept the low profile. Yeah. Um, and so then having the young stud come in yourself, I'm not saying anybody else, um, and be on like in page six and being, you know, having – things written about him that weren't that had nothing to do with football was right. fascinating it was like how how is how is this the world we live in like i don't understand it like i don't i don't get it so i think i think we were just the novelty of the idea that um you know what what was going on i think really enthralled us yeah and I, you know i didn't do myself any favor i just walked into you know Times square and like whatever restaurant like oh cool let's go here and uh I thought, uh, you know, the photo shoot doing the GQ thing and then Bard Scott putting all the pictures on every TV in the building when we walked in, either right before training camp or right at the end of OTAs or whatever. But, um, you know, it was, <laughs> I figure, I hoped that the guys were like, oh, okay, you know, they're making fun of me. Like, it's cool. Like, they might like me. So uh, later on, I found out they really didn't. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, no, kidding. We, no. It was we, we, it was we, awesome, dude. I I was I was very lucky to walk into that setting, and um, you know, it takes it takes a lot to get in and um, you know, call plays to guys that are all older and pretend and kind of win an Oscar or an Emmy or something in that huddle. Like you got the confidence and the juice to make these plays go when you're really you know swimming in your head, and you would never want to admit it because I'm so damn competitive, but. Um, you know, the, the, the veterans we had, I don't know if there's a better situation for a young guy, um, than I had. Speaking of veterans, give me a, we, we have a guest coming up that is Ooh. a veteran of a different industry. Oh yeah. What do we, what do we got? What are, you, what are you teasing before we get to our interview here? So to kick off our first podcast, we have one of the all time, well-documented all time biggest Jets fans, um, and he has been a staple in the media industry, especially sports uh, media, a uh, former sports center anchor and co-host, one of the all-time greats, a Mr. Rich Eisen. So I am Ooh. fired up because now, you know, obviously he's on the NFL Network now, but um, I mean, I watched him growing up, man. He was, he was sports center to me. And him and Dan Patrick and those kind of uh, people that became icons in this industry. Uh, so cool to know that he was always a Jets fan and still roots for the Jets. Uh, so we're going to pick his brain a little bit, but I'm fired up. Yeah. And you know what? I think we should get to it. So let's bring in uh, the interview with Rich Eisen. All right. Let's bring in our first guest of the exchange, the uh, Emmy Award nominated and winners, I believe, right on NFL game day morning. No, NFL I mean, Network, I, I, but Rich, 
I, yeah, I, I wish I had one. I, I have one that I, I kind of won somewhat, but you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm more nominated sort of. than winning. It's all good. Costas well, just hey, kicked my ass are forever big deal. in a day, Mark. You know, and Nick, and then, <laughs> and then Bob kind of leaves the scene a little bit. Now Ernie Johnson kicks my ass every single week <laughs> and year, but it's okay. It's all right. I didn't well, mean to step on it. your introduction. I'll be quiet. <laughs> no. See, this is a problem. I'm like a host. I'm too much of a control freak. I'll shut up. I'll be the guest. No, now. this is good. <laughs> this is good. You're, you're a great guest and an even better host. We've seen you a million times on TV. I loved watching you back on SportsCenter and now, of course, on NFL Game Day Morning. But we want to welcome Rich Eisen. Thanks for being here Thank with you. me and Nick Mangle. Thanks, gents. How you doing? We're fantastic. Okay. So couldn't be any we, better, we man. Led, We're happy you're here. We led into this interview uh, discussing your fandom. Yes, sir. Um, can you tell me how that came to be? Was yes. it something you were born into? Yes. Or, okay. Yeah. I mean, well, uh, born into it in a way that, you know, my, my parents weren't really big sports fans. They stopped following sports when the Dodgers left Brooklyn. Uh, and, uh, I was born in Brooklyn, raised in Staten Island. My older brother, he's two years older than me, Jeff Eisen, uh, one of the best, uh, estate and tax lawyers in the country. If anybody <laughs> needs that sort of help, um, Plug. and, uh, he, he, he was a diehard fan of the Mets and Jets because that's the way things were back in the day. You were fans of, of the teams that played in the same stadium more often than not. Um, so it was, I was always Yankees, Giants or Jets, Mets because of Shea stadium or, or Yankee stadium. Then, you know, the Giants and Jets left Shea and went to New Jersey. But before all that, you know, my brother was a Jet Met fan. And I realized early on that if I stayed that way, um, I was not going to be very happy to be honest with you. Um, I, I didn't know where the championships were coming from. So in 1976, the Yankees won the American League Championship Series game, and Chris Chambliss went around the bases and was fighting off everybody who came out of the stands. And then 1977, one of my favorite players of all time, Reggie Jackson, went to New York, and they won the World Series. So I hopped on board of the Yankees. So I'm that rare Jet-Yankee hybrid. I never jumped Ooh. off the Jets. I stayed on I stayed on uh, the Jets because I loved Richard Todd. And I still have somewhere in my house, I think, um, the Wesley Walker jersey that I had my name stitched into the back so they knew which bunk to return it from in my summer camp, you know, Camp Locanda. Um, and, uh, and I stayed a Jet fan throughout that whole era with Ken O'Brien. And sure enough, when I joined SportsCenter in 96, um, the Jets just a couple years later with Parcells made the AFC championship game in right. Denver against the Elway Terrell Davis yeah. Broncos. And um, I went to that game and sat in the third to last row of the stadium in Denver in mile high, even though I was a sports center anchor just two years in. And I wore the Wesley Walker Jersey to the game. Yes. And it was so great that first half they were up and it looked like it was so quiet in that building. And then, you know, the second half fell apart, but I'm, I'm a diehard uh, jet fan. And, um, and sometimes I wear it on my sleeve a little too much, you know, I love it. I, I, I was so excited to see that when I was drafted and did some interviews with you, but I'm assuming either that championship game or, you know, had to be one of your favorites wearing that Wesley yeah. Walker jersey. But now you went to those games. Did you come mm -hmm. when Nick and I were playing? Did you come well, to our when, championship when games? When you and Nick were when you and Nick were doing it, I was already on NFL Network. So, had you guys won either of those AFC Championship ground and pound games, I would have. Yeah. I don't know how I would have handled going to cover a Super Bowl for NFL Network with you guys <laughs> there. That would have been, and by the way, you know, I, I understand Steelers and Colts fans would think otherwise, but you guys being in the Super Bowl would have been such a breath of fresh air and Rex being in the media day and you guys just, it would have been phenomenal, just phenomenal. Um, Can you imagine Rex at the podium there? Uh, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really what most everyone deserved. You know what I mean? But um, I agree. So that's I agree. why I wasn't there. 
I wasn't there, but you know, I was in Radio City Music Hall when you were drafted. Right. And as a matter of fact, Mark, if I'm not mistaken, I did some sort of um, Q and A the yep. night before, the night before. With you and Stafford. Yeah. And yes. when you were done, yeah. you flew back, I guess, yep. to Southern California, be with your family, and then you flew back. You flew back <laughs> after you were drafted. You know, yeah. I remember I was with you and Stafford the night before the draft. And the whole time, Nick Mangold was just hanging out in the Caribbean, just <laughs> not a care in the world. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I wasn't that old yet. I didn't have to worry about the draft. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> not yet. But then you joined the crew, and it was just awesome. It was a heck of a time, man. It really was. So the um, you you mentioned Trell Davis, and so that I wanted to get to this because um, I, I'm a big supporter of St. Jude's as well. Hmm. Uh, the 40 yard dash, the run rich run. Um, can you give us a little backstory on how that happened and sure. how it transitioned into what it has become and the way that you're able to support St. Jude's out of it? Well, um, now that you guys are part of the paparazzi and Mark, you're doing more TV work than ever before. Um, you know, TV, there's a lot of just waiting around. There's a lot of sitting around, there's meetings and then there's waiting for the live stuff to happen. So this was at the combine in 2005 and it was our first combine in the old rca dome oh, wow. and uh and it was just me and td sitting in the stands of the old rca dome just the two of us sitting there about two hours away from our our um from our uh live nfl total access show from the combine that night at like eight o'clock and we had just done some pre-tapes and interviews with some coaches and it was just sit around and wait so i remember sitting there and it was the hum of the you know the the lights in there and you could hear the air conditioning and we were all just like trying to stay awake and then i just for some reason looked down at the field and i asked terrell davis just the two of us sitting there how fast do you think i can run the 40 and he goes right now and he looked at me i was in my suit and tie and lace up <laughs> you know, dress shoes. And I'm like, yeah, right now. And he just laughed. And I don't know, you know, this is a family show, so I can't curse. Right. I mean, pretty much. So <laughs> I did curse at him. I told him to F off or himself, whichever one I don't recall, <laughs> but I definitely cursed at him. Um, and I went down to the field and ran it. Now I had no idea that somebody in the, uh, production truck was there and recorded it oh he fell no idea you. had no clue <laughs> i just ran it and i asked td to time me from up in the rafters you know and so um i ran it had no idea they recorded it and so on live tv two hours later they played it back and um i did look ridiculous i ran a six seven seven it was terrible Oof. uh i well, know so did mark <laughs> yeah i was that wasn't much worse than me <laughs> But all the coaches, at any rate, the coaches like Holmgren saw it and came the next day to Total Access and wanted to see it again, and <laughs> Joe Gibbs. And so it, it was a big running joke for the first combine we ever covered there. And then the next year when I showed up, Holmgren said, are you going to do it again? I'm like, I don't think so. He goes, well, what do you mean? you got to improve on your time. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, that kind of makes sense. So I did it over and over and over again. And then um, uh, uh, the advent of the technology of being able to overlay one 40-yard dash onto yeah. another added a total slapstick nature to it because my 40-yard dash, like I, when it overlaid over, you know, somebody was really fast, you know, like Chris Johnson was preceded, so we could never do that. But like John Ross, for instance, you know? Yeah. So overlaid over that he was off the screen by the time I was on the two yard line, you know, he's already gone and it added a humorous aspect to it. More and more people wanted to see it. And then about five, six years ago, the idea was forwarded to me from NFL network. How about doing a charitable component? And, you know, we, we looked at all the charities the NFL were involved in and I've got three kids now. Um, and so it was, it was an obvious 
choice to do it for children, sick children for St. Jude that is totally donation based. And as you know, Nick, like people never see a bill, man. They don't see a bill for going there wow. and staying there and being fed there and don't for the health care there. It's truly a magical place. And it's just taken on a life of its own to the point where now I'm a 52 year old man lamenting the process of having to get ready for it, you know, and what's but the I'm routine? Doing... Do you like have a whole thing now where you got a massage? Here's the problem. My like wife... a stretch routine. What's the deal? Well, yes. I mean, last year it was just, you know what? I'll go on a cleanse 21 days before. You know? <laughs> oh, wow. That was that. That was that one. Uh, oh, two years before it was working out with Glazer and unbreakable. You know, and so and how did I that gotta go? tell you, he, he just you add break? him to the lengthy list of people. I've had Michael Johnson train me one year. Brandon oh, Marshall wow. trained me one year and it was delightful. You know, guys know Brandon, um, obviously. And and so it, a, there's a long list of people who I have sorely disappointed with my athletic performance because they're all thinking like they're the ones like, you know, those coaches, like right. I can turn that player around. Yeah. They all, they're all it. like, yeah, they're all like that with me. And I disappoint every last one of them. And the one thing I don't want to do is face my wife at the very end. Like she's always on pins and needles to see if I broke six seconds or I improved. And then I call her up and tell her my time and I get the, Oh honey, like I get that. Like, <laughs> uh, it's just, it just hits Great me in the gut. <laughs> every time but that's the story but, Nick, of the whole if i can lend if, if i can lend my hand to kind of the coaching um, okay. i i could easily get you over eight seconds <laughs> <laughs> i could i could take care we're of that trending we're trending in the wrong direction boys so if you if i want to get appreciably worse you're my guy is what you're saying i'm here i'm here for that that i okay, that Nick. i can do easily all right. And okay, I'll, the I'll, best I'll, ever was what was the best time ever? Five nine four. Oh, so you've broken six. I have a couple of times. Yeah, I'm like a fine wine. I well, here's the deal. I I I, I got out of the dress shoes because I, the last thing I want to do is blow an Achilles out and be on a wheelie mm, for like six smart. months off of this. So <laughs> um I'm I'm like I've I've begun to use like actual the same shoes that the the uh guys at the combine race in. Nice. Know, so so okay, good. Uh, Rich, Rich, you were mentioning the broadcasting, um, and you know you you talked about Mark being uh, yeah. you know all over TV, part of the paparazzi. If you could give us a scouting report of kind of where his pros and cons are, <laughs> things that we can improve, that would be amazing. Sure, um, I, I, Mark. I think you're a natural at this thing. I think you're a natural at it. You're likable. You are uh, Nick. I know that's not what you want to hear. <laughs> I know the wrong way. I know, but Hey, you're the one who's trying to get me to run slower. So <laughs> trying to help you out. Point. If you're going to disappoint, I, you might no, as well disappoint I, I, the best. Mark, you sound good, man. I, I heard you on the call Cardinals and Niners this past week as well. You're engaging. You're, 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 and, and I was thrilled to see Fox has put you out there on the lot there in Pico Boulevard for, for Thursday night football too. Yeah. You know, the only thing I would improve is, you know, those those AFC championship games. But you can't do that. You know, honestly, it's one of those things where you'd rather have those rings when you're showing up there and there's Bradshaw and there's Dude, I know. Everybody's you know what I mean? Like got them. And the uh, other night we're doing the Jets. Um, Colts. Uh, we're doing Jets Colts. And, you know, they're like, well, when the Jets really got things going and it kind of became a Jets town in New York, because Nick can attest to this, it totally did. The Giants were, you know, down and we were up and it was different and it was awesome. And then Strahan just goes on with the Super Bowl rings like it'll never be a Jets town. And I'm just like, ouch. By the way, that's not true. <laughs> that will never be a Jets town. That is <laughs> patently not true. It you guys be. know, it, and I grew up on be. Staten Island, there's a ton, a ton of folks in the old outer boroughs of New York City. You know, Giants fans are there too. Queens, Staten mm -hmm. Island would mm -hmm. literally crumble, crumble. Parts of Brooklyn, obviously Manhattan and the Bronx have Jets, there's Jets fans everywhere. Crumble. Staten Island and Queens would absolutely crumble if the Jets win. I mean, the Canyon of Heroes would be lit. <laughs> and, um, you know, I just want to be alive for when that happens, you know? No That's doubt. No doubt. That'll be fun. I got a, I got a question just knowing 
uh, seeing behind the scenes at ESPN, I got really close with Kevin Nagandi and how much he looked up to you and the people who had come before him as sports center anchors. And I would see those shot sheets that they get uh, yeah. showing, you know, reading off the highlights, they tell you the number, who it is, what the play was, boom. And then you kind of add your special sauce to it, whatever it is. When you describe the play that you're watching, you're voicing over a highlight. There's got to be one or, or a couple to you that stick out in the nineties that were just like, man, I remember watching this. And then mm. knowing I was going to talk about it and then getting that shot sheet and having ideas in my head. I'm just very curious about your favorite one that you've ever called. Well, uh, it's it's interesting. Um, I mean, I, I'll be honest with you, Mark. Sometimes I see these um, when either Scott Van Pelt has my s stuff in the vault. Oh, or yeah. Or something happens where they'll pop it up because uh, so many people, and I love the fact that People want to keep Stuart Scott's memory and essence mm, alive. Absolutely. Uh, and I'm at the forefront of that. So I'll see my stuff pop up there from like 98, 99, 97. You know, the last dance, I'm watching it with my kids. And then yeah. all of a sudden that dude with hair pops up with a Dennis Rodman <laughs> shot over that the shoulder. Cool. And I'm like, and that's where I met my wife. Um, and so, but it's like a totally different world it's like a different life i look at it, i'm like wow that actually happened and so the two sh the two highlights that i guess i would remember the one is the one that i tried out when i auditioned i i went from redding california i went from market like uh 200 and change out of oh, oh, pardon me like 130 and change out of 200 metered markets in the united states and they found my resume tape from there because i sent it to a headhunter and i went and i auditioned and the night before, I stayed in the Radisson Hotel yeah, across yeah, the street, next to the. Right? <laughs> yeah. And I'll never forget. I couldn't sleep for two reasons. One, I was so nervous, and two, uh, you could hear when somebody was peeing in the bathroom upstairs. Like that's the that's the <laughs> hotel I was staying in. You know, so I just said, "Screw it!" You know, I'm just going to turn on Sports Center and and just get ready right you never know you just just keep stay ready be sharp and i watched the dan patrick keith olberman big show from that sunday oh, wow. night because i was i was auditioning on a monday and i remember sitting there thinking to myself okay uh if i did the highlight this is how i'd say it if i did that highlight i'd do it that way and i, I just to keep myself sharp then yeah. the next day it was time to do the audition and they used the same highlights from the night before so i had no, no idea way. i was actually yes i was actually my Practicing. film study was going to pay off. Like I knew exactly what I was going to do. And, um, and I got hired, you know, right on the spot. And that was life changing. And then the other highlight I'll, I'll never forget was because it's the only time I'd ever done a highlight of Q school, the Q school for golf. Yeah. Okay. They actually had like showing qualifying school for your golf card, right. Okay. For your pro for your, for the tour card. And they had mm -hmm. some, it was just all different sorts of players who were, you know, true lead pipe wielding professionals ready for their tour card and amateurs just hoping against hope. And there was one dude who was like, you know, um, 250, maybe three bills and shorts. Okay. And they showed him messing up his putt so many times. He shot like a 10. And when you finally hold out, Stuart and I had not seen the highlight before because they hand it to you sometimes the commercial break. Uh, he, he, the guy fished his ball out of the cup finally and flipped the double bird to everybody in the stands. <laughs> and Stuart, Stuart and I could not catch our breath. We were laughing so hard. I wish that would be a video that could showed up on Twitter or whatever. We laughed yeah. so hard. We... Like, <laughs> They were like, throw a break, throw a break. And we're like, we were just waving the camera off. Like, we can't. <laughs> so those are my two answers to that. Those one. are good. Uh, That's really good. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Um, all right. So as we, um, we're going to wrap this up, yes. we're going to do what we do, the um, our quick fire questions. Yes, These sir. are all pretty much New York centric. I will So play. Don't, don't even think about it. Just need them quick. Okay. Uh, Knicks or Nets? <sighs> Honestly, when Charles Oakley got dragged out of the garden, I swore off the Knicks the rest of my life. 
honestly. Oh, and I know that they're very exciting now, and I'm thrilled for Knicks fans who act like every win is the championship round W. So um, you, you, I walked into that one. I I know it's rapid fire. I'll take the Nets. I'll take the Nets. Okay. I, now, I now have to slow down the rapid fire because you brought up Charles Oakley, yes. who I have a mortal feud with um, because at CC Sabathia's charity softball game, I'm yes. playing first base. Uh, Oak hits one to the shortstop, and he's running as fast as those old legs can carry him. Oh, no. And instead of trying to run to the base and maybe through it, he decides at that point – now, I'm like two years out of the league. I haven't touched a body in two years. He decides at that point he's coming to take me out. And I'm, I'm on the base trying to catch this ball. He knocks melee. <laughs> and so forever, me and, now, me and Charles Oak there are – no bueno. Oh wow! Well, I don't know if this is like it's a Rex Chapman question. Was that a block or a charge? Were your feet set? <laughs> Good point. Oh, Good they were point. set. Okay, were so that's set. a charge. It's on oh, him. It was charge, charge all the way. Okay. All right. Good. All right. I, I got to focus it. back in here. Um, Peter Luger or Demo- Delmonico's? The Peter Luger. Perfect. Ooh. Uh, Subway or taxi? Subway. Subway. Nice. Uh, JFK or LaGuardia? JFK. LaGuardia is just. <laughs> I mean. Uh, no way no way honestly LaGuardia is so bad I'd rather go to Newark that's how bad it is oh wow and Newark I have literally lost years off my life waiting there (laughs) JFK a hundred percent of the time I I I landed in Newark uh Monday night and didn't get off the plane for an hour and a half oh my god Uh, it's just like it's the largest airport on planet earth how do you not have a gate (laughs) So big. What the hell? And by the way, you, wheel you up the steps we and get you off the damn thing. You yes. knew we were coming. <laughs> that, uh, like, it was like it was a surprise. We took off. And yet, that's how bad LaGuardia is. Oh, all right. Um, best borough? Staten Island. Well, I was going to hope you were going to say Miami. Um, and then nice. lastly, and this one's kind Jersey. of a right. <laughs> Central Jersey. Empire right. State Building or Freedom Tower? Uh, Empire State Building. Empire Ooh, State Old building. school. I like it. I like Classic. it. Thank you. Thank you, Rich, so much for joining us. We really appreciate this. Um, it was a blast. I, totally. I, I will speak for Mark on that um, because he's not that good at linguisty. <laughs> <laughs> I made that word up. Just write that down. Uh, but Linguist thank you so word. much, Rich. Don't yeah. worry. Leave it to yeah, the yeah, guy to tell you about what words are, Nick. Hold on a second. One second before I leave. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Got to take this off my wall in my office. It's off camera. Hold on. Here you go. Here we go. Picture of me with one of my favorite humans on planet Earth. Here we go. There we go. Joe? Oh, yeah. There's Joe Willie. Yeah, there Joe is. Look at that. Oh, that's cool. Look at that's that. Cool. It's, uh, honestly, the fact that I, I cannot hold on. I don't know what's going on with this camera. Here we go. There it is. That's Come cool. on now. That's really Look at him. Joe. I always Joe enjoyed our shit. visits, pal. Stay well, your old pal, Joe. <laughs> pal. <There> they, pal. <laughs> I love that there he does the, the shoulder grab. That he Dude, does yeah. the shoulder grab. And it's Honestly, awesome. he does a shoulder grab and he smiles at me. And I just. So it's cool. Just the, oh, my God. Honestly, I just. Uh, it's just it. That's the end of. That's the end. That's it. <laughs> Period. So good. End, end of story. I got this for my like, 50th birthday party. He signed this. This is outside of the NFL honors in Atlanta at that Super Bowl. That very, and we were all cool. smiling, even though we knew the Patriots were going to win the next day, you know? And so <laughs> there we are. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, thank You're you the so man. Much. I'm, I'm real. I'm real. Just I want to say that to all the Jets fans in case they don't know. Let me add last one thing, too. I'm sorry if I'm blowing off your, uh, your run. No, down. you're good. What do we call Salah's beard? Is that a nine o'clock shadow, ten o'clock shadow? What is that? Oh, what is that? Because it looks like thirty. Like, Seven thirty. You've got the nine o'clock Daylight shadow. Savings. <laughs> I've got whatever I've got going on because I don't have anything up here. Mangle, kind of you've got. Little. You still have that mountain man. You still got oh. that Chris Christopherson thing going. So, but what is? It. I know I'm dating myself. What is Sala? Was that a ten o'clock? It's shadow? like what is it's that? just well manicured. It's well it's like amazing. all the perfect you know length. Impressive. Yeah, it is good coloring. It's, you know, it's nice. It's great. Right, Our kids it. were on the same and that's, uh, youth team, and so every once in a while, he would be able to make it to a game. Still okay. looks just as perfect at the fifth grade. That's our analysis of the Pee-wee current football. jet situation. Very good. <laughs> Excellent. Rich, you're the man. Thank you so much. All right, for your guys. Time, buddy. Anytime. I loved it. Take care. Congrats on the on the show. Appreciate it. All right. So that was awesome. Uh, Rich was fantastic. 
He's right? the man. He's the man. He's unbelievable. I really could just listen to him talk. I didn't need to really say anything. Like, he really should like, be on one of those apps. He has that iconic voice that can be on one of those yeah. apps that like read stories. Oh, yeah, like the Morgan Freeman. Like I would love yes. that Morgan Re Freeman reading kids books. Dude, it would be amazing. Bro, I got to – okay. I've been listening to this uh, story called Wonder, and it it's Matthew McConaughey. And it's only mm -hmm. like 30 minutes long. I have yeah. not got to the end of it. I fall asleep every time. <laughs> and I refuse to listen to it while I'm awake. But all I remember is this girl wakes up. Her grandpa's like out on the dock looking through a telescope. And she goes out. She sneaks out with this dinosaur plush toy. And like they sit down and have a conversation. And that's as far as I've gotten. <laughs> I don't know what happens. Could you imagine go uh, Morgan Freeman uh, oh, reading Go Dog Go? So good. So good. It would be fantastic. I think it would be I fantastic. Agree. I agree. We're what do you got going for the rest of the week? To, oh, sorry. Go. No, that's all right. We, we got dino books going right now uh, with my little guy. And some of those words are really big. And it's very <laughs> difficult. An Ankylosaurus? Yeah. <laughs> Tyrannosaurus? <laughs> yeah. I mean, what? Just making stuff up now. Uh, no. Um, what do we got? No, it's just uh, getting the kids. You know, we got back from Europe about two weeks ago. Um, and so the kids are still, uh, they're, they're just now getting all caught back up and um, getting back into the routine. Like it, we got into a routine for like a month of September and then we go away for two weeks. And then yeah. now we're getting back into the routine. So it's that's just... It's been interesting at the Mangled household for the past two weeks. What I always hated having to take homework on like trips. We'd go on fishing trips or we'd go down to like our place in Mexico or whatever during school. And like, that was such a pain because you don't really retain any information. You're not trying to do any homework. No, our Were you the parent who made hey, them do it? You're that parent. No, our school doesn't even send it to before. So um, oh, do wow. you remember speaking of fishing trips? The um, the fish that we ate at some restaurant in the city. You remember this? We were up at like the chef's table, I think. And we're it wasn't there. a Nobu. No, no, uh, we're at the chef's. Uh, it was like maybe um, it's Daniel. Is that one or Daniel? I don't know. Was it Daniel? I think it and was had, Daniel. And we had uh, they sent out mackerel. And we are on a double if date. Dad, if, if you said your dad ever saw you um, eating Eat the bait fish, he'd kill you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that was expensive bait fish, dude. That was ridiculous. That, it was a good meal. It was very nice. Not, very nice of you to include me and the missus. Macro. I remember yeah. that. I'm not eating macro. That's good. Yeah, that's gross. Uh, what else do we have? <laughs> I got a birthday coming up. Thanks for caring, Nick. Um, let's see. I'll be 35. And for my birthday, really? yeah, don't tell. Don't, yeah, I'll be 35, dude. Wow, you're old. I know. Why are you so much younger than me, though? I'm only 37. <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> All right, fair enough. <laughs> um, 35. No, but you, oh, are we having a party? Um, I don't know. Because I don't remember getting an invite. <laughs> I know the mail's been bad lately, but yeah, they do also. Bad. Have, they have, it's probably. I think it's. I'll e send you a photo. I'll, I'll yeah, send you a photo right. of the party. <laughs> we'll Facetime address you. to be <laughs> address to be released later. Yes, it's gonna be that fancy. Um, no, we're going to uh, we're going to Legoland because my son's birthday is after Thanksgiving, the day after Thanksgiving. So, going to Legoland for my thirty fifth, but it's really for him, obviously. Obviously, um, so don't tell him. Big into Lego. Is he big into Legos? Dude, he loves Legos. He loves Lego Land. He loves all the rides. Um, so, and Disneyland's yeah, taking only as Oh, dude. It's awesome. And it's way cheaper than Disneyland. Yeah. Huh. It's a little cheaper. So. All right. Fair enough. We ride uh, the Legoland so... train until it ends. And then you got to go to Disney. <laughs> then you got to go to Disney. Um, awesome. Well, I think we did a decent job first first day right i mean i really enjoyed it yeah i kind of liked it i guess rich was awesome <laughs> rich was great rich was great nick you're, was cool you're gonna or whatever rich come on get out of here <laughs> <laughs> no he's the man 
It's cool. Awesome. Uh, so thank you all so much for listening. Uh, this has been The Exchange with yours truly, Nick Mangold and Mark Sanchez. Um, and we hope forward to, uh, or we look forward to getting back together again uh, with more future guests, more fun topics. Um, and please give us a, a listen. Check it out. Check it out.